well it didn't go well at all I failed and I'm I feel all different kinds of ways about it okay so bright and early this morning the plan was to get Wally into the cat carrier get him to the vet simple enough right little cat big person you can do this yeah I've never encountered a cat like Wally I mean he was already unique but I'm telling you what after my experience with him this morning he is even more unique and I now understand how he's able to live out in the wild and survive on his own I get it now that cat without a doubt is the fastest, strongest house, house cat I have ever encountered in my 48 and a half years on this planet. I have encountered a lot of cats. I have stuffed a lot of cats in cat carriers. I have bundled up a lot of cats. I have. Big cats, little cats, old cats, young cats, fat cats, skinny cats. I've done it. Wally is in a class by himself. Holy shit. My older son was there. He can he can attest to this because he witnessed it. I didn't get a video of it. My younger son said he was going to be up to assist. He was sound asleep. And when he's sound asleep like that, you can't wake him up. He will literally sit up, open his eyes and talk to you, but he'll be sound asleep. I left him out of it. Like we're just I told my older son, I said, we're just gonna do this. I had on my long my lawn mowing pants. I have these long heavy duty cargo pants that I wear to do yard work. I had those on because I have learned with the other three that they are pretty scratch proof if they if you have to gather up an un, an, an uncooperative cat. They're very good. They keep you from getting scratched up. I had those on. I put on a long sleeve thick fleece jacket to protect my arms and my chest. Zipped it up. I was ready, man. We had that. We ha I had my towel. I was gonna throw a towel over him, do the quick little Perito, grab him, and the, the cat carrier opens on the top. I was gonna get him down in there, no problem. Bing, bang, boom. Because my son was standing at the ready, and as soon as I grabbed him, he brought the cat carrier right over to me. And the plan was grab, plop, slap, slap the lid shut. That was the plan. With any other cat. You could do it. With any other cat, it would be possible. Because I've, I've done it. I've done it many times in my life. I've had to take a lot of cats to the vet or transport them or whatever. I'm not, this is not my first rodeo. I've done this many times. <sighs> All right. I am so disappointed in myself. I'm mad at myself. I'm sad. I'm disappointed. I feel like I let Wally down. I feel, I feel like a, a mixed bag of shit right now. This happened hours ago, and I am still upset. Okay. So, Wally comes in, you know, and he wants his pets. That made it even harder. Sometimes when he comes in first thing in the morning, he will come in, but he doesn't go straight to the food, even though I'm sure he's hungry because he hasn't had anything to eat all night. But he comes over, and he wants me to pet him. He wants his pets before he eats. So he'll come over and, you know, he'll want me to pet him for a few minutes and then he'll eat. So he came over for his pets and I gave him his pets, you know, everything's fine. And then he went over to eat and I looked at my son. I said, are you ready? He said, I'm ready. I said, all right, as soon as I get this towel over him, grab that carrier. I didn't want him, I didn't want the carrier near the food. I didn't want anything to look off to him. So it's about, <laughs> that was the plan. Okay, now let me tell you. This cat is always on guard. This cat is always on edge. All the time. All the time. Any fast movement, any sound out of the ordinary, he's gone. He takes off. As soon as that towel touched a hair on his back, he jumped straight up. He jumped straight up. I got the towel under him. He bowed up and was solid as a rock. And in midair, he starts scooby-dooing like this. I almost got him to the carrier. I almost got him in the carrier. 
he dug into my back legs. I could feel his back legs. I, he was he, not my back legs. His I don't have back legs. He dug into my legs and I could feel it. He bolted. He squirted out of that towel and scooby dooed his ass out the door. If I had shut that door, he would have broken his neck on that door. And that was another thing I was afraid of. If he gets away from me, he will run. He will tear ass toward where he goes in and out of that sliding door and he will hit the door. He would have broken his neck. I'm not, I'm not even joking. He totally would have. So it was all over in about four seconds. He was gone. Took clean off. I didn't even say which, I didn't even see which way he went. He was going, he was moving so fast. He was just, it's like he just evaporated. He went into a pocket dimension somewhere and was just gone. And I'm just standing there just shaking, holding this towel. And my son and I, we look at each other and our jaws are just on the floor. We're just like, oh my God. And I grabbed him hard. I grabbed him hard. I was not playing. I was, I had him, I grabbed him as hard as I could without hurting him. You know, I had him for about one second. I had him, even though he jumped straight up. As soon as that towel touched him, he went straight up in the air, which I was not expecting. I was not expecting that. And it caught me a little off guard. And I think that messed up my grip a little bit. I was not ready for him. I was not expecting him to do that. I didn't really know what he would do. I what I told my son that. I said, now, I don't, anything could happen. He may burst into flames. Shit, I don't know. He may have lasers coming out of his eyes. He might be like that little baby in The Incredibles. I don't know. This cat is an enigma. I don't understand him. Well, that was hours ago. He has not come back. He's gone. He is just gone. Now, I'm about 85% sure he'll come back. He'll come back, um, but he's gone. So I had to call the vet and tell him, yeah, we're not, I'm not gonna be able to bring him today. I was not, was not able to get him. I tried, you know, we, we failed, we didn't get him. So he will not be coming in today. If they told me before, they said, it's no big deal. If you can't catch him, just call us and let us know. It happens all the time, especially with cats that are a little on the feral side. Sometimes you can't get them that day. Don't worry about it. All right. He will not get near a cat trap, the trap. He won't get anywhere near it under any circumstances. He's terrified of my other cat carrier. Now he's terrified of me. So I'm not gonna worry right now about what I'm gonna do about him. I, I hear you, I hear you. Mary, he needs to go to the vet, he needs this. He, I know, I know that. I'm very aware. I've known it for two months. I've been planning this shit for two months and I failed, fucking failed. So for now, I'm not gonna worry about it. If he comes back, I gotta I gotta reestablish some trust with this poor cat. But I, I, I understand now why he survives on his own. I get it. I get it. He seems very laid back and like he doesn't care about anything, but man, it's like a switch gets flipped when he, if you if he feels any kind of any slight chance of a threat, he becomes a totally different cat. He is strong. He is unbelievably strong and fast. Dear God, that cat. Wow. My son and I were just both like, wow. Oh my God. He said he jumped straight up in the air. I said, I know. I felt it. I caught him in a towel for about a second. Dear God. So I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm not. That poor cat. I left some food and water outside on the little the little deck the little patio for him so if he does come back there will be food and water there for him um i haven't seen him though he's he's just gone he's just completely gone i don't even know where he went he's just disappeared 
So I've just got to be patient. I, I am fairly certain he'll come back. He probably won't come in the house again for a very long time, if ever. And I don't know how long it's going to take before he'll get near me again, which makes me very sad because I enjoy our, our little routine that we've established with our morning pets and our afternoon pets and our, our little conversations. Like yesterday, I came back from Aldi and I had these groceries. And he came in the house and he was sitting on the floor and he was just watching me put up groceries. You know, he's just sitting there just like the little gentleman that he is. He's just sitting there watching me put up groceries. And I started telling him about the items. I said, look here. I got, these are, these are calzones. And he goes, <laughs> like, really? I put them in the refrigerator. Look, these are French fries. <laughs> he just makes like, he was just, he has a comment about it. I was showing him all my groceries and he was talking to me. It'll be a long ass time before he does that with me again. I have a feeling. But I'm patient. I'm, I, I, I love this cat to death. Um, I'm just, I'm going to have to give him all the time and all the space he needs. Will I get him to the vet? Not anytime soon. I cannot catch this damn cat. I need a tranquilizer dart or something. I cannot stress to you enough how strong this cat is. I'm going to tell you now, I could have picked up all three of my cats at once easier than I could get him. I shit you not, he is stronger than all three of my cats put together. Hands down. Now, he's not neutered, and that's my one. I really wanted to get him neutered. But I can't get him neutered if I can't catch him. He won't go in a trap. He will starve before he will go in a trap. He just won't eat, and I, I have a feeling he has other places in the area where he can go eat. So he's not, you know, he's not, that's not his only source of food. I could catch my cats with no problem. They're happy to go in the damn trap. Evie and Boot went in the trap. <laughs> More than once. Like, stop it! Because I had it set up where the door wouldn't fall. Hell, they went right in there and they ate up all the food I had for Wally. I had to keep rebaiting the trap. <laughs> Wally took one look at it and was like, Bitch, how stupid do you think I am? And my cats are like, okay. <laughs> He's looking at me like, y'all are stupid. What the hell are you doing going in there? Okay, sorry about that. There was a man taking a picture of the back of my car, and I just wanted to—I wanted to know what he was doing. He was—I have a bumper sticker. He was taking a picture of my bumper sticker to show somebody. So, <laughs> like, the fuck is this man doing behind my car? So, I just got out and was like, "Hey, like, oh, okay. If it's okay with you, can I take a picture of this?" I'm like, yeah. He looked a lot like Peter Sellers. It was kind of. It was kind of unnerving. He was a dead ringer for Peter Sellers in the face. You know, if you've ever seen him, he was very funny. Um, so yeah, I, I hear you can Jackson Galaxy me half to death over this situation with Wally. I, he is a wild cat. He is a, at his heart, at his soul, he is a feral cat. He is not a calm, domesticated cat. He's not. He is. He's got a wild cat soul. And he will not be tamed. He will not be contained. So, yes, I know he needs to go to the vet. Yes, I know that. It's easy to sit there and say that on your ass when you're not doing it. I've been trying to, I've been trying to plan this shit out for two months. And I failed. All that man has on a Griswold Family Christmas t-shirt in August. I like it. It's funny that I see that. So, so here's what I did. So, Wally disappeared. And my son and I did a play-by-play -of, -play of the whole incident. Like, oh my God, can you believe that? No, I couldn't believe it. Holy hell. Just, you know, like, wow. What? You know. I'm glad he was there to witness it. He said, that was, that was the craziest thing I've ever seen. He said, you will never catch that cat. No one will ever catch this cat without a tranquilizer dart. Wow unbelievable so so after it was over and I stopped shaking like I'm not gonna need any caffeine this morning um whew. and he was gone I mean we looked for him you know it was like don't worry about it there's an old Honda Civic look at that well you can't see it there's a about a 90 
very early 90s Honda Civic. It's very small. Four door. Has the automatic seat belt. <laughs> I don't, I'm not staring. Your car is cool as hell, man. Damn. Look, I'll show it to you right quick. Check it out. Look at that. That's neat. So, yeah, I hear you. Mary, watch Jackson Galaxy. Jackson Galaxy, with all due respect right now, can kiss my ass. I've watched Jackson Galaxy's videos and blah. I went through all that with Dexter back when he was staying with me. Please do not recommend Jackson Galaxy to me. I just want to give him the one finger salute right now. I love him to death. God love Jackson Galaxy. He does great things for cats. Blah, 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 blah. Do not mention Jackson Galaxy to me right now for the love of God. I love you. Right now, sometimes I just, you, you ever just need to vent? You ever just need to bitch a little bit? That's me right now. Okay. So, after I calm down, hang on a minute. After I calmed down, I felt, I, I don't know why, I have been just a mix of emotions. First of all, I've been all tense for, for like all week leading up to this morning. I didn't sleep well last night or the night before. I tossed and turned thinking about this. And, and then it was all over and I failed. So I'm mad, I'm tired, I'm sad, I'm frustrated. I feel despondent, I feel hopeless. It's really stupid to have this many feelings over a failed attempt to put a cat in a cat carrier. The hell? I don't know. So anyway, I thought, okay, I know how I am. And I thought, okay, forward, forward motion, forward progress. Don't sit down. I know I got my day job. I know I got to do that. But right now, don't sit down. You need to keep moving. You need to feel like you are accomplishing something. Because I have like the sense of failure because I didn't get him in there. So I called the vet, took care of that. He's not coming today. Take care of that before I forget. So I thought, well, I sold something on eBay and I need to go up in the attic and, and get the thing I sold. So I have all my eBay stuff up there. And uh, so I went up there to get it. And while I was up there, I ended up moving some totes around. I have these big plastic totes full of clothes and Christmas decorations and, you know, just all manners of shit. And I'm up there moving it around. And I got to looking at it all. And um, so I ended up reorganizing, basically reorganizing a bunch of stuff in the attic. And I right now have a trunk full of stuff. I got stuff in the back seat. That I'm, in, I'm at Goodwill right now. I'm going to go donate a whole bunch of crap. I have a bunch of Christmas stuff. I have some wreaths back there. Um, it's just a hodgepodge of stuff. It's mostly Christmas decorations. Um, I got all my pink and gold decorations out because I don't, I don't really think I'm going to do another pink and gold tree. I mean, it was pretty, but I don't want to do it again. So I've got all that out of the attic, brought it down, put it in the car. I have a bunch of wreaths. I have some like play, place mats, floor mats for Christmas stuff and, and stuff I don't use. So I thought just get rid of it. I didn't get rid of as much as I, I started to. I found several totes of red, like red and gold stuff. And I started to get rid of that, but I thought, no, hang on to that right now. It's actually really pretty. I like doing my tree in red and gold. I think it's really pretty. But don't just leave it just leave it don't 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 make any rash decisions because you're in a weird frame of mind right now don't don't do anything stupid don't get rid of a bunch of stuff in the heat of the moment or you know don't do that but I had all I had already kind of decided I wasn't gonna do I wasn't gonna do pink and gold again anyway so I thought well you can get that out of here so I put it all in bags so I had the totes now I have a bunch of empty totes which is good because Eventually, I'm going to need to start getting ornaments for, I want to do a tree, I want to do an iridescent tree. I have a white uh, artificial tree, which I did in the pink and gold, and I want to take that tree. I don't really know how that's going to look, though. I have a feeling that's going to look very bland, but I didn't want to do it with a green Christmas tree. I want to do a tree with an iridescent theme, but I'm afraid that's just going to look very plain. I'm good. I'm, you know what I could do? I have this I don't know where the hell I'm getting into this now. But I had this garland. I found this garland up there. That is, it's silver, but it also has like pink and blue and green metallic in it. 
So it does have some color. So I thought if you do a bunch of iridescent ornaments and then you use a bunch of this garland to add little bits of color, I think that would look good. And just like clear white light. Or I could do all iridescent with multicolored lights. That's an option. I don't know. That's not the point. The point is I went up there and I, I, I made my, I got, just got very busy. I got sweaty too because I'm doing all this by myself. Like I'm just going to do this. It gives me something. I, I, it makes me feel better. Like I'm getting something done. I'm doing a good thing. I am accomplishing something today. I'm not accomplishing what I had hoped to accomplish, but I'm accomplishing something. So, and it made me feel better for a little bit, but then I got downstairs and I got to work in and I'm, I'm just constantly looking out like looking for Wally and he never, he never showed back up. He's just gone, man. He's just gone. But yeah, I'm glad I left the sliding door open because he bolted so hard for that door. He would not have noticed it was shut because it's clear glass, you know. He would have broken his neck on that door. I've never seen a cat move like that in my life. I never have. And I've been around, I've been around cats for my entire life. I have been around cats for 48 years. I've never seen a cat move like that. Never in my life. It was supernatural. Unbelievable. Um, and I had a I had a good hold on him, but him jumping straight up, I think, surprised me. Well, I know it surprised me. It, it did surprise me. That's the guy that took a picture of my bumper sticker. <laughs> Looked like Peter Sellers. I didn't tell him that because he was. I, I didn't know how he would take that. And he was a little odd, but um. You run into odd people in Goodwill. Like me. I'm one of them, baby. <laughs> Look in the mirror. You're in there too? Yeah, I know. I'm one of the weirdos in Goodwill. It's usually in Goodwill that people strike up conversations with me. Pe strangers come up and just talk to me. It happens frequently. They'll just come up and just start talking to me. Just about whatever. Sometimes they ask me a question. Sometimes they just have to come share something with me. And it happens in thrift stores a lot. I don't know why that is. It's weird. Strangers just, they just like to talk to me. I don't know. I think I must give off a vibe or something like I'm, I'm inviting it without realizing it. I don't know. Does that ever happen to you? Do strangers just talk to you? Just, they'll just come. I think there are a lot of lonely people in the world. They really, they're looking for some kind of human interaction, just some kind of connection, you know. So if anybody wants to talk to me, I'll talk to them. Except the other day, what was it, Wednesday? I was in the, I was upstairs, I was doing my calinetics tape, and I had gotten to kind of a difficult part with leg exercises. And I was already not in a good mood because my legs hurt. <laughs> and my, my younger son comes to the door, he said, Mom, there's some man at the door for you. I said, I didn't order a man. Why is there a man at my door? He said, I don't know, but he wants to speak to the... He said he wants to speak to the head of the household. I said, oh, reckon that's me. So I went down there and it was some, and I had seen him in the neighborhood. It was a salesman and he was on this little sort of a hybrid hoverboard slash Segway kind of thing. And I guarantee you it's just a gimmick to try to get people to talk to him. And he had his little hoverboard Segway thing sitting in my, on my sidewalk, on my little walkway. And he's standing at the door with his little clipboard and his little polo shirt. I don't know what company he was with, I didn't care. And he, so I opened the storm door just a little bit and I just said, what do you want? He said, I'm assuming you're the lady of the house. So I have a big ass, no soliciting sign on my door. You can't miss it. And I've had to do this before with people like this. And so I just, I just gestured like Bar Barker's Beauties, all the prices, right? I'm just gesturing to my no soliciting sign. I just went, I didn't say anything. I just went, oh. he goes, well, actually, ma'am, I didn't see that. And he started saying something about, you know, like you, you can't expect people to just see. And I didn't listen to the rest. I literally just slammed the door in his face and went back upstairs. 
I was not in the mood to chat with him because I'm done being nice to these people. I am done being nice. Salesmen come through all the time. They love to come through the neighborhood selling all just whatever, and they can be very, very pushy. I, I've had a neighbor that even had to call the cops on one that just would not leave, just would refuse to leave, and she ended up having to call the police to get him to leave. It was, it's, uh-uh. That's some messed up shit right there. So, I've quit being nice to them. I've tried, you know, no thank you, I'm not interested, and they, they just won't shut up. They won't shut up. So, but I found slamming the door in their face to be very effective. They go away when you do that. If you bark at them, that helps too. Like if I'm outside trying to do yard work and I see one approaching me, I just cut the lawnmower off and I stand up straight and I start barking at them. They go to hell the other way if you start barking at them because it's effective and they think you're nuts and they don't want to deal with you anyway. So just bark at them and they'll go away. So, you don't even have to use a furious bark, like a ferocious bark. You could do like a little dog bark. Doesn't matter. Just bark at them any old way you can and they'll go away. It's just, it is a constant problem in my neighborhood. These damn salespeople coming around. Just like, there are no soliciting signs everywhere in the neighborhood. They don't care. They piss on those signs. They come around anyway. So, all right. So, I kept myself busy and I have a whole bunch of stuff and I need to go around back and drop it off. I'm very disappointed today. I am very, I'm mad at myself and I've gone over a hundred different ways. Well, Mary, if you had just done this, if you had just, if you hadn't have done that, you could have had, you could have gotten him in there if you had done this, if you had done that. You know, you can second guess yourself all day long and I've been doing that now for literally for hours I've been doing that. It's on over in the afternoon and I've been doing this for hours. This was at seven o'clock this morning that this happened. Any technique you have to catch a cat, you can forget it with Wally. He plays by different rules. I need a tranquilizer dart for this cat. CBD oil ain't gonna do shit for this cat. Whatever kind of secret power he has laughs at your CBD oil. I appreciate the suggestion. No. I need a fucking tranquilizer gun. I need whatever they take elephants down with. He's a little cat physically, but spiritually, he is like a damn mountain lion. Holy shit. So, I'm going to regroup. I'm going to give him all the time he needs to feel comfortable because he no longer feels comfortable around me or at my house. I hope he comes back. I'm pretty sure he will. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure he'll he will come back even if he just starts out you know like I'm not coming inside but I'll eat the food on your patio but if you open that door I'm taking off if you get anywhere near me I'm taking off I'm going to give him all the time he needs I'm gonna give him all the space he needs I think this cat has had a rough life at least at some point and he just does not trust people at all. It took a long time to gain his trust enough to the point that he would even step foot in the house. And I have now, that's, that's over. That's over. So, it didn't work. And I feel like shit. So, anyway, I'm gonna go drop this stuff off. I'm gonna get back home and get back to work. <sighs> And just, I don't know, try to make the best of the day as best I can. I'm going to go in in a minute and shop. I'm just going to look around for a minute. Maybe I can find something cool. I don't know. I don't know if it would make me feel any better, but it's worth a shot. So, I just wanted to give you an update on Wally and let you know that it, it didn't happen. And I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. We're just going to let things be what they are for right now. We're going to let everything calm down. I'm going to give him all the time he needs. No harm, no foul. That's all I'm going to do. So thank you so much for being here. It is Friday at least. Happy Friday. And uh, hopefully I'll get in a better mood later. Right now I'm just not in a very good mood. So, But thank you for being here. I really hope you're having a good day. And I'll see you again soon.